Hi, I'm Alexis Busetti, owner and financial coach at Cistern and Grove. And I have to tell you, today I'm pretty pumped about this lesson because it's about budgeting. And budgeting makes me so happy because I'm a nerd. I understand that most of my audience at budgeting does not make you happy, but I just want to remind you that budgeting, if you watched uh, one of my recent videos about dreams, budgeting is really one of the main tools that you're going to be able to use to get you to your dreams. So let's just, first of all, answer the question, what is a budget? It's a written plan where you and your spouse, if you're married, tell your money where to go before you put it there. That's, that's all it is. To be more specific, it's a plan where you tell your money where to go before you put it there, and that plan is written down somewhere. So it's, um, it's either typed into something on your computer or on your phone, or it's, it's physically written down, but it's where you can see it so that you can be accountable to it. So now we've answered the question, what is a budget? It's not a complicated answer. Here is what I wanna to talk to you about. Three tips to get you started if you have never written a budget before or if you haven't written a budget in a long time. So here's the first tip. The first tip I have is go backwards. So in order to move forward with your budget, you're gonna to have to look back. If you haven't budgeted before or you haven't budgeted in a long time, I recommend looking back at least a month at what you have already spent. If you really wanna delve deep, take two or three months and kind of take the average of those expenses. But look back and look at every place you spent money. Go and look at your bank account every automatic withdrawal that came through. So maybe for your mortgage or your utilities or your cable or cell phone bills. Um, don't forget your subscriptions like Netflix and Amazon, Hulu, things like that. Um, also, every place you swiped your debit card, you need to take that into account. Every place you paid cash for something, um, every place you wrote a check, if you still wrote checks, sometimes I still write checks. Um, and if you're using a credit card or multiple credit cards, every place you swiped a credit card. So you need to know where you spent that money and begin to start to put those expenses into categories. So that's step one, go backwards. Um, step two is find a place to write it down. So uh, I don't mean like at your kitchen table. That's great. You can do the budget meeting at your kitchen table. But what I mean is find a tool that works for you and your spouse, your personality. Maybe you have two different tools that say the same thing and that's fine. Um, so use a legal pad if, if that's your, you, you know, if that's your thing. Use a legal pad and a calculator. It's really all you need. Um, we've been using an Excel spreadsheet for almost 15 years, along with the envelope system that we're actually thinking about, probably we'll make available to you guys really soon. Um, it's got a pie chart on it, you know, all these kinds of cool tools. Um, there are also other things on your computer that are services like QuickBooks, things like that. Um, apps for your phone now, we're, we're starting to switch over to use the Every Dollar app, it's free. Um, Mint, I've heard, has a good one. So you just need to find a tool that works for you, that works for your personality, that you can set yourself up for success when you're doing this budget. So um, that's step number two, is find a place to write it down and something that will work for you. And then once you've written it and you start to live it, then step three is be patient. Be patient and be consistent and have a little grace for yourself. Um, 
What we've seen as uh, in the financial coaching industry is that it usually takes about three months for the budget to kind of settle out the way you want it to. So you can imagine the first month is going to be based on these expenses that you were you were just kind of throwing around and not really thinking about. And so you may realize that doesn't really reflect where you want to go in the future. And so your first month may generally be 80% right. Maybe it's mostly correct and you kind of go, oh, there's some changes I want to make. Well, make those changes and live them the next month and see how they feel. Um, did you allot enough for this? Did you allot too much for that? And then make those changes again. And generally by that third month, you'll start to feel your flow and you'll start to realize, okay, this really is it, but don't get discouraged. Be patient, be consistent, and give yourself some grace. Um, also, you know, your previous month's budget is a good place to start when you continue with this, but just pay attention to those things that come up in the next month. Make the adjustments that you need to, and then, um, and then live by it. Use that as a tool to, um, to keep yourself accountable, to keep you and your spouse accountable to what you want your money to do. Remember that you're the boss of your money. <laughs> you know, your money doesn't, uh, doesn't, just, doesn't just go places without you telling it where to go. So use that budget as a tool. Boss your money around. And, um, and then you'll just be that much closer to those dreams that you really want to achieve um, financially and for your family. So that's it three tips to make your budgeting easy if you have never done this before or if it's been a really long time. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and um, find us on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and on the website. I also put this in blog form it's called something like tips for rookie budgeters. So anyway, enjoy. Thanks.